Hi everyone, this is Charlize from Forward Chess and today we're going to be looking at the new release by Jan Timmen called Max Oyver's Best Games. Let's get into it. Now of course there are many different ways to pronounce Oyver. There's you, Yui, uh, but for this video we're going to stick with Oyver. So Oyver is known in the chess world for many different reasons. Of course, he was the fifth world chess champion. He led as FIDE president and he's written so many books, I think over 70 books. Uh, Oive had a successful career as a player. His reign as world champion did not last long and uh, he had a doctorate in mathematics, studied as a professor, which was really evident in his chess as he would prepare super well. His play was methodical, meticulous, math brain. But despite all of this, a lot of people still consider Oive to be more of an amateur player, particularly compared to his fellow world champions. And now the reason for this is that Oyve's career, although it was successful, as we've mentioned, his reign as world champion wasn't long. It was about two years and he made many blunders in his career. But Oyve played brilliant chess as well. And he has some games that we still learn from today that we can still look at and find inspiration from. And that's exactly what this book by Jan Timmen aims to do. So Jan Timmen is also a Dutch grandmaster and he knew Oive quite well as his uh, predecessor. He wrote this book as a celebration of Oive's games, showing what kind of chess he could play at his best, starting from the young age of 19 all the way to his old age. So let's take a look at what this book entails. So here you can see we have the book on forward chess and you can just search for it in the search bar right over here. We are going to have a look at a game from the book, look at its contents. But if you want to see what it's about, as with any book on forward chess, you can view a free sample. Now the free sample will give you a snippet of the book, you can see the table of contents and you can go into some chapters and see what it's all about. Now I have the book so let's have a look over here. We can see the table of contents, Timon goes through Oive's entire career from the young age of 19 all the way to uh, Oive as an older man still playing at the chessboard. We have his games from when he was a world champion, a brief period but nonetheless an important one and uh, games from even afterwards. Every game is very well annotated as we'll see by Timon himself and we also have comments from Oive, from top players and uh, just everything is quite in depth. Now we're going to have a look at one of the games over here between FM Geller and Max Oive. If you don't know who Geller is, he was a prominent Soviet grandmaster and a top player at the time playing against Oive over here. So let's have a look at the game here. We're going to see it from Oive's perspective. So we've got the board flipped uh, for black. We can just flip the board over here. By the way, I'll look at some, well, I'll mention some forward chess features as we go along, but we'll have a completely different video for that. So just be on the lookout. So let's get into it. This match is played in Zurich, 1953. Oive has the black pieces. Let's start d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop b4. This is known as the Nimzo Indian defense. Oive used to quite frequent um, the in king's Indian, but here we're going for Nimzo Indian. White continues e3, c5, attacking white center, a3, forcing the exchange of pieces, black captures, goes for b6, building a nice pawn chain, opening up for the bishop to go to b7, bishop d3, bishop b7, 
F3. Now F3 is a, an idea that not only blocks the black's bishop control over the long squared, uh, the long white squared diagonal, but white also prepares for a future E4 to keep progressing in the center. Black continues knight C6, knight E2, castle, castle, knight A5. White starts pushing E4 and now black retreats knight E8. White continues knight g3 and we're going to see in a few moves that white's idea here is to have an aggressive kingside attack and that's exactly what's going to happen. White's going to bring the queen over, the rook over, just placing all pressure on the black king. Now black captures in the center, c takes d4, c takes d4, rook c8, taking control of that semi-open file. Now the attack begins, f4. Geller playing aggressively, but as Timman tells us uh, in the annotation that objectively it would have be been better for white to treat this position positionally. Now that would mean that instead of going for f4 here, c5 could have been a better option for white. After black captures, whites can simply play bishop e3, attacking the rook, hitting the a pawn afterwards, but even better positionally is a move to play for the initiative, which is bishop d2. Now with bishop d2, black plays knight c6, now white goes for bishop e3, attacking that rook once again, but this time the black rook can't retreat and stay on the c file. So the black rook goes to a5, white continues queen b3, bishop a8, sort of keeping black's pieces on the back ranks. Rook a c1, queen e7 and a4. White has more space in the game and has quite a lot of initiative for the lost pawn. But nevertheless, white went for the more aggressive approach, which was f4. Black captures on c4 and white keeps charging with f5. Now there is a lot of analysis um, throughout. We're not going to delve into everything, but we'll look at a few options here. Uh, black plays f6, stopping white from playing f6. And here, aggressive move, rook f4. Geller's idea is to scooch the rook over onto h4 to assist in the kingside attack. But the plan is considered to be a little bit premature. Better option could have been a4, which is annotated. But now, in this position, we can see a beautiful idea played by Oive, really showing an understanding of what black needs to do in this position. Now, as black, your pieces are a little bit stuck, uh, claustrophobic, one could say, on the back ranks. White is starting an attack, white has some kind of initiative, and white has control of the center. However, even though white spawns are controlling the center, however, even though white spawns are controlling the center, they are hanging pawns, and hanging pawns are not well defended. They can be possible targets, and that's what makes this next move so great. A move that even Kasparov gave two exclamation marks, and that is b5. Now, the idea of b5 is not to just reinforce the knights on c4, but black is opening up for the black queen to go to b6 and start attacking this white king, having some kind of play in the game. After b5, we have a lot of analysis as well, and as you can see, it's quite neatly organized, uh, Every variation is labeled for you to understand where you are. Let's go back to the game. Rook h4, white continues. Let's just take these arrows away. Rook h4, white continues with the plan. And queen b6, the reason for b5 opening up this diagonal for black. 
White goes for e5, really the only move to play here, or the rook is defending the d-pawn. Of course, that d-pawn is pinned, so black gladly captures. Uh, we've got some comments here, once again, a lot of analysis, but let's take a look at what happens. White exchanges. And here we get to quite a scary part in the game. Queen takes h7. White's queen is in the game. White's rook's in the game. Our king looks a little bit tied up on the king side. But as you can see, we can at any time run away to f7 if need be. So this is what we're going to see happen. White is going for this crazy attack on the king side. And it looks like white has all the play in the game. But at the same time, this white king is super open. And all of white's pieces are not in the game. The bishop's not in the game. The a1 rook is not in the game. Although white will try to fix that in the next few moves. White's position is as volatile as black's, if not more. And we're going to see how Oive takes advantage of this. The king runs away to f7 and white comes in bishop h6. Of course, the pawn is pinned. Now we see a beautiful move from black to completely take white's queen out of the game, out of the equation, and that is rook h8. Again, there's a lot of analysis here. Oive gives some moves, Timon gives some moves. We've got some moves by chess writers, chess players, even something like b4 was an interesting idea here which is very, very interesting to uh, have a read, have a look at. But let's continue with our game. Rook h8, a crazy idea, forcing white to capture the rook. Otherwise, I'll just capture your bishop. And that's what the white queen does. Now, the point of this is that the white queen does not control the light square diagonal, the h7, b1 diagonal. And that enables the black rook to infiltrate with rook c2. Now, white's, of course, uh, panicking a little bit. The g2 is under attack. White goes for rook c2, trying to cover some squares on the c file, trying to exchange rooks. But this is already uh, a little bit too late. There was one saving move in this position, which is d5. There's some analysis here. The point is that the bishop's diagonal is disrupted and rook g2 is not possible on the next move. Right, so after rook c1, white captures on g2, the king tries to run away, and our brilliant infiltration by the black queen is queen b3. Now there's no way for black to stop this. Of course, the king can try to run away, but the queen still makes it to f3, going to f2 next, and mate is inevitable. So this is one of the cool games from the book. There are about over 70 games in total, very well and deeply analyzed, a lot to learn from. Uh, this is just one I thought was pretty interesting. On the sample, you can also have a look at a few more, and that's it. So that's it on Oive, one of the most influential chess players, uh, chess figures. He was the first Dutch grandmaster, by the way, and still holds the record of most Dutch uh, championship titles. And uh, you can find the book on Forward Chess. It's in the description box below. You can also have a more in-depth read on the Forward Chess blog about him. And yeah, that's it for today, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.